All right, so this is Todd Atkins, and we're here with MMA Conspiracy Hour again. I'm here with Miguel Iterati, Mike Davis, and Liam Hopmans, who's a new addition today. And uh, I'm going to throw it to you, Liam, first. We're talking about Nate Diaz and kind of this Tremayev match. And what we want to focus on today is why is he taking this fight when apparently he didn't have to? And what, what you might think about whether there's some pros and cons of taking it. Well, uh, it, I mean, the pros uh, and cons, I feel, are both both obvious. You know, you got this Kamzat Chemaev who is being heralded as this, you know, this super weapon that, you know, he's undefeatable. He's steamrolling through competition. And uh, if Nate can can beat that guy, you know, who is the guy, that's how he's being advertised. If he can topple that mountain as his swan song, I think that uh, – like what more is Nate Diaz? He's already done it once. He already did it with uh, a guy that some people might be aware of, uh, Conor McGregor. And he wasn't supposed to win that fight either. So uh, he's always about those big fights. Um, dangerous fight though, and that's where the cons come in. It's uh, both high, high risk as it is high reward. Because in my opinion, uh, and you guys might uh, disagree, I think it's a stylistic nightmare. You've got this athletic specimen in Kamzat who. Um, if Nate Schoen doesn't necessarily have the best takedown defense, he has been controlled by wrestlers in the past. And uh, Kamzat is just a monster when it hits that mat. And he's also explosive. I mean, Nate's fought as low as lightweight. And Kamzat's, you know, one-punching guys as high as uh, 185 pounds. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't favor this matchup for Nate Diaz. But uh, if he can do it and, you know, cash out and uh, – He's been talking a lot about how he's disappointed with his contract. You see him all over Twitter and stuff. He's not, uh, it doesn't sound like him and the guys behind the scenes at the UFC are necessarily, you know, meeting eye to eye right now. So, I mean, as the Stockton gangster, how gangster would that be? You know, they got this new guy that they're really pushing, really putting themselves behind. And Nate's been feeling like he's not getting, you know, the best treatment. So what kind of, you know, bittersweet moment would that be where if he could take out that guy and then make his ed make his exit you know cash out get a huge paycheck and you know it'd be a, like a huge f you to uh to dana white one last nate diaz middle finger to the boss you know so uh i guess that's where where i see it coming from um a little bit of revenge on both parts i think he wants to stick it to dana by beating their new guy and i also think dana you know, it's like, all right, we, we've treated you well. We gave you the McGregor fights. You know, you're the, on the ultimate fighter. You had a title shot. We created a make-believe uh, BMF belt for you. Like, and you're still upset. So, all right, we're going to feed you to this wolf, this monster in Kanzat. So I think it's both parties between Nate and uh, the UFC brass. They're, they're, they're jawing at each other right now. So we'll see who comes out on top. Now, Miguel, Liam touched on something I think is interesting where he's saying, you know, at least on the outside from what we see, it looked like they weren't getting along, that Nate wasn't agreed to any fight, that he was going to wait out his contract. And then all of a sudden this came out from left field. Why do you think it happened that way? Yeah, I think a lot of what uh, Liam said is very astute. I'm sorry, could you repeat your question first? I, I got... Well, this match, like, before it was announced, it didn't seem like Nate was going to take a fight at all based on their negotiation. You know, they weren't agreeing on anything. And then this all of a sudden came out of left field, and everyone was like, what the hell, you know? <laughs> he's going to no, fight, can, and he's going to fight can, this guy. What happened? Miguel, will you, will you allow me to add a little bit before you answer? Because I, I think what I say might might help you. There's a ton of questions in regards to this fight, and there's more questions about this fight than, than there's answers in your normal like combatants. So one of the rumors, once they announced it, one of the big rumors was that the fight wasn't even signed yet. So that they announced it before Diaz even signed the paperwork. So I don't know if this is like a bullying thing, if this is just kind of some sort of leverage, but there's a lot of controversy controversy and questions about this fight but it's not your standard he said she said drug you know stuff kind of like with Tess it's it has nothing to do with any of that it's just more of an administrative positioning thing Miguel former head of Bodog obviously MFC Euphoria you've been involved in a lot of this 
what is your take on it? I think I think it's a complicated situation. I think Liam, like I, I started to say before, it was pointing out a lot of astute points in terms of the motivations here. I think we've gotten back to basic motivations. Like I do think the UFC has had it with him and is tired of it. Again, it's not the Fertitas anymore where, you know, Nate may have been able to call up like Lorenzo and talk real. And Lorenzo is probably hip enough to understand. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, these guys, Vegas casino owners, they got range. You know, I don't know that the new owners are anything but corporate. And you start throwing lawyers at the Diaz brothers and stuff like that, and they don't react well to any of that. And that's, in general, I think a very astute, way to say look they're still fighting over it and i don't think that there's you know some secret backroom deal where they're going to announce like they diaz as a future contract after this fight or something like that i think this is the the way they want to go out um from diaz's perspective i think liam was also pretty astute i think the bottom line is is you're going to put diaz at you know plus 800 underdog then that really hints at motivation. He's always been an A-type dog, you know, like not the kind of guy who likes, you know, a, a big guy walks in, you know, hey, he was, didn't he smack uh, Khabib himself at one of the UFCs or something like that, you know? It's like he doesn't really care about all that reputation stuff when you start talking like, no, this guy will just kill him. Oh, that's not a great fight. That probably doesn't sit well with the Diaz camp. It's going to be fascinating because both camps represent a real, uh, they're backed by gambling, both camps. The Diaz guys put money on their guys. And if you put minus 800 or plus 800 on it, they're going to come in and we're going to see how the other guy balances that off because he comes with, you know, foreign money and they, those people have a different, you know, they're betting from different pools of money, let's just say. You know what I mean? When it comes from Russia and stuff like that. But that's his his community. So all that is, is going on. Diaz, on a personal level, if Diaz took a million bucks and bet on himself and wins this fight, now you're talking about a $10 million payday, which is probably what he thinks he's worth. So even though the UFC, somebody I think mentioned, you know, yeah, he's a tough champion, and they made the BMF belt. They put him in the McGregor fights and stuff like that. But he's probably, very frankly, looking at it, goes, yeah, and you probably kept 80 to 90% of the money. Yeah, you, you gave me a chunk of it, and thank you. I'm living okay. But how, why do you get to keep 90% or 80% or whatever that divide is? He feels he's not making enough. And that, I think, is the UFC's other motivation is, is they had – a little bit of a motivation to not just let him walk without a fight, I think. And that is, is how can you let your cash cows just start to walk out like that? You can't, you let milk them for one last one, put them in a, in a fight that's going to have international interest with a lot of betting action and milk him for one last one. If you can get him killed, get him killed. And Diaz is probably sitting back going, you know what? I don't know. I, I you know, C Cody Garbrandt is a good comparison to Chimaev at this point in my book. Not that Chimaev is going to go south that way, but at 11-0, 10-0, right around there, they rushed Cody in the title fight, and they painted him as that, and we really didn't have all the answers yet. We didn't know everything about him. And we're in that same boat with this kid. This guy, Chimaev, Hamza, is definitely a fascinating asset, but at the end of the day, the dude has the Gilbert Burns fight, really, in my book, to, 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 to rest your hat on. Everything else, you know... He, he checks over a lot of boxes. Is he the the thing fascinating thing is Diaz in a five round fight has to think he can win, has to think in a five round fight he can take him into deep waters where he's never been, and and has to again an A type. He's not going to be like yeah that guy can beat me. So he's got to think five rounds. I got this guy, and that guy's never been there right now. Again, from his background, everything he's been is the way he communicates and everything. You kind of think, yeah, he's probably going to be, he might be okay in the five rounds, you know what I mean? And that may not be enough. And that's what makes it an intriguing fight. But I can definitely see Diaz thinking, you know, plus 800, you know, F you in every way, shape, or form that I've ever fucking delivered it in. Take that, you know, I ain't doing that, you know. So I think that's what it is. And the UFC, they can let him walk, and then they don't have that pay-per-view at the end of the year.
Now, Mike, before you start, I want to ask, is this as simple as they just threw money at him? Or what happened here? You know, I thought he was going to wait out his contract. I wasn't expecting to see any fight announced. Why did this happen that you think as a promoter? Turn on your mic. You muted your mic. It's one of two things. It's either the contract is already renegotiated. Man, I, I don't hear. It's already renegotiated and, and Nate is already resigned again. That's highly unlikely based on them sending such a wolf at him. It's almost as if they're trying to get him embarrassed on the way out the door, maybe hurt his pay-per-view sales because he's always said, you, you, you know, Connor boxed. Why can't I box? You know, I, I want to fight Jake Paul. I mean, Jake Paul and Dana have never had, like, I don't think they're capable of having a working relationship because neither is giving each other respect. And Jake Paul's really, like, if you look at his last pay-per-view, he's not a pay-per-view draw. He needs somebody on the UFC side, particularly a smaller athlete, in order, to, you know, to, to cross that finish line. And like Miguel said, this is a giant FU. Like, it really is. So it's, it's, it's hard to gauge. There's usually a lot of moving parts here. And, you know, another moving part, which is really strange, is Bilal Muhammad. Bilal Muhammad, you know, usually the Muslim fighters don't like to fight each other. Bilal Muhammad obviously doesn't drink, obviously doesn't smoke, doesn't do any of that, doesn't even swear. And he's tweeting at Nate Diaz, hey, man, I'll help you with your camp. Like, Bilal has wanted Shemaev as well. He's wanted he and Shemaev to headline in Abu Dhabi. So I, I think if you look at, like, Nate in general, he's getting up there in age. He's probably only got a few fights left. This is definitely one that he can cash in on. You know, whether Why didn't he, he just say, I'll wait it out and fight Jake Paul? I don't have to do this. I, I, think, it's, I think it's guaranteed money. Miguel, you're muted. I think it's it's guaranteed money. Like with just Shemayev, he's guaranteed a decent seven figure payday. I think with Jake Paul, he probably has that ability as well. But it's it's also a risk. But if he yeah, loses I, the Shemayev fight, then what? But this way he gets both, and I think you okay. know the both paydays, and that's you know maximizing. That's what he needs to do, especially because you know for whatever reason there have been times in his career where he sat for two years and didn't wasn't monetized. His brother. So, yeah, we worse, but yeah, they, they both suffer from that. So I think now, as he nears the end, he's probably thinking, "Man, yeah, I, you know, I, I got to cash in and get get a few more paydays, just to keep it going, and just to make it, you know, respectful." You know, he's got a real interesting psychology where, like, he's kind of like the defender of like a mystical like fighter image kind of thing as well, and you know, I, I'm not really verbalizing it well but his fans and stuff like that are real loyal for a reason that there's a connection there and stuff and you know for him to say i don't want to fight hamza uh, you know you're right he's he's the guy he would beat me up he, he he almost i don't think he could say it because it's not in his makeup but even if it were if he felt that i don't think he could say it for his image you know but i think i think we're talking about legitimately he's like man you picked the wrong guy. I could beat this guy. Liam, what do you think about it? Do you think it was just money or was there something else? I think we're all kind of starting to overlap here and uh, getting to the bottom of this. Yeah, money definitely is always going to be a motivator. And uh, Nate always brings in big paydays. And I'm sure that comes, uh, you know, he's getting paid more with each win and each performance and those uh, performance bonuses, but uh, there's not going to be a payday he's experienced yet than a, a Nate Diaz payday. Um, you know, Diaz brothers, as uh, I think Miguel mentioned, they have such a huge loyal fan base. Even my, you know, friends that don't necessarily follow the sport as uh, religiously as I do, D everyone knows the Diaz brothers. So uh, the money is there for Kamza. Uh, the money is always there for Nate. He's already, you know, lock that in at this point in his career and with what he's done uh again i think it just it, it comes down to the, the the feuding that's going on and uh, i did i like what mike touched on i do uh, i do agree with his point on that uh 
they're going to try and drive him. If, okay, you said you want, um, you know, all over Twitter, you want out of your contract, you know, you're unhappy with the way we've treated you. If that's how you legitimately feel, well, then I hope it's genuine because we are going to give you our toughest guy in the game right now. And if he beats you the way that we think he's going to beat you, then you're not going to have, you know, that leverage anymore. Should you decide to, well, okay, maybe I misspoke. Maybe I got ahead of myself. Maybe I'd like to stick around. And then they can say too bad. So sad because I agree that fighter pay is nowhere near. It should be, but for the complaining that Nate has done with all the opportunities I already mentioned, like tough and the title shots, the BMF belt, the McGregor fights, I just don't think he's the guy that should be doing all that complaining because he's not one of their worst treated fighters. They've given him a lot of cool opportunities and he's made millions. So, and then to do that for one of their guys and he's still on Twitter driving down your stock by saying this company sucks, this and that it's uh, it's not a good, good look. And Nick, Nick is uh, notorious for that as well. They both complain about their treatment in the past and they've been, they've been taken care of. So I think, uh, this is Dana saying, you know what, enough is enough. Uh, you know, you got one fight left and we're going to we're gonna try and drive you down. Yeah, I really, I like uh, like what Mike said. I, I have to agree. I think they're trying to drive him down on this last fight and then that'll be, that'll be it. Now, Mike, do they have some legal uh, wiggle room to make him take that fight rather than wait out his contract? Is that, is that what it was? You know, I, I think that's, I've heard, and when I say I've heard, I should say I've read on the internet. So you got to consider the source. I've heard on the internet through like general musings that Diaz didn't even sign the fight yet. Like this fight's not going to happen. He didn't sign the fight yet. So it's entirely possible the UFC presented the fight. He said no. So they publicly announced it anyway. And now it's, you know, you take the fight, you hurt your image. You turn the fight down, you hurt your image. So it's kind of a win-win for the UFC in regards to how the fight was presented. You know, e either way, they've got what they want. So is there, like, can you make somebody fight somebody? No. I mean, you can either be injured or, you know, go out like Ken Shamrock did with, with Kimbo. You know, slice yourself in the locker room and say, hey, man, sorry, this fight can't happen. It was an accident. So that's... It's interesting. I, I, I think there's a lot more drama to this than what most people are kind of keying in on. And for Bilal Muhammad to be so quick in volunteering his services, even though he he's publicly said that he wants to fight Shemayev, I, I think that there's some locker room stuff happening that's not leaving there, but there's there's some things swirling around, you know. And for Nate Diaz to be put in a position like that, like the UFC. You know, they double down. They double down on both angles. And Diaz isn't a punk. So it's his either ego is going to make him sign that contract or he's going to do something so Nate Diaz that everybody's going to love it. Nate's not going to do something that's going to mess his image up. That's for sure. So, Todd, let me bring this bad boy home. All right. So this is uh, Todd Atkins. And again, this is another episode of MMA Conspiracy Hour. Diaz versus Shemaev for Mike Davis, Miguel Adorati, and Liam Hopkins, who did a great job today, signing off. Till next time.